Harry's Wife, Part 104.43 Archetypes, what a load of B. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. And yes, Tuesday comes along, and with that inevitable appearance of industrial beige, courtesy of Harry's wife and the spot pod crap. I'm not going to waste my time listening to it. I will probably read the transcript in due course. However, we can, of course, rely upon the material from other people, and we turn, of course, to Mail Online with an article by Martin Robinson that tells us, Harry's wife says, not everyone is going to like you, but should respect you. Which is hilarious, really, isn't it, that once again she engages in that projecting behaviour. That, I realise not all of you will like me, but you should respect me. Oh, okay. Should we respect you for telling lies? Should we respect you for revising history? Should we tell? Should we respect you for all of the grifting behaviour that you've engaged in? Tell us, uh, why should we respect you? On what basis? On what basis are you afforded respect? Do you mean that you should automatically receive it from other people? It's rather... High-handed of you, isn't it? Well, smack of a sense of entitlement. Oh, of course, you have a huge one of those. Uh, moreover, uh, given the fact that you accept that not everyone's going to like you, why is it then that you routinely call those people haters, misogynists, bigots, and racists? Are they not allowed to dislike you? Moreover, given that you say that because not everybody will like you, but they should respect you, uh, surely it should be also work the other way around, that if you, Harry's wife, don't like somebody, you should respect them. You talk a lot about respect, but your actions, as is typical of the narcissist, don't support that. Your behaviours demonstrate in the way that you jump onto bandwagons, that you turn up at memorials for slaughtered children, making it all about you, that your pod crap is all about you, that you don't really listen to your guests, that you whinge and whine slating a family that actually made you feel welcome. Did you show them any respect? Did you show the late Queen any respect when you decided that you would throw pelters from across the ocean as her husband was in hospital and on his way out? No, I don't think you did. Did you show any respect to the late Queen by accepting the invitation to go to Balmoral? No, you didn't. You had one of your little hissy fits, didn't you? Of course, Harry's wife, we see straight through you we see the high-handed nature by which you demand that everybody else should respect you even if they don't like you, and that you then decide that you are not included in that diktat, that you can dislike somebody and not respect them. All of that, and we've only just got through part of the headline, doesn't all go well, does it? Harry's wife says, not everyone is going to like you but should respect you, and claims difficult is a code word for bitch used to gaslight strong women in archetypes pod crap. Ah, or could it be that people using the description of difficult just mean that, that you are difficult? Of course, your paranoia, Harry's wife, makes you believe that when somebody refers to you as difficult, and let's not beat around the bush here, these pod craps are all about the words that have been used about you, and this is your method of asserting control over people by getting your own back. It is transparent as a piece of glass. It is transparent as James Corden arsehole's need to demolish the all-you-can-eat buffet. The use of the word difficult isn't a co-word for bitch, although it might mean the same thing ultimately, but it means difficult. And it's been applied to you because guess what? You are the Duchess of Difficult. You have repeatedly engaged in behaviours where you've treated staff, treated crew, treated friends, treated family in a difficult manner. You, of course, can't see it because your narcissism will not allow you to do so. 
but the way that you've bullied staff, of which there are numerous accounts, the reports by Tom Bowers, assiduous research in revenge demonstrate that your treatment of people on the treatment shoot was nothing that could pass for showing respect and corresponded with being difficult. You're turning up at a restaurant and your handler wanting a particular table for you is difficult behaviour. You demanding a particular tiara when it was your wedding is difficult behaviour. You expressing a particular order of the way that things must be done by pinging emails at 5am to people and demanding an immediate response is difficult. Undoubtedly, those people also thought you were a bitch. But when they called you difficult, that's precisely what they meant. And stop trying, although we know why you do it, to suggest that it's gaslighting. The person that engages in gaslighting is you. The article continues... Harry's wife today claimed that strong-minded women are branded difficult. No, strong-minded women aren't branded as difficult most of the time. Strong-minded women are recognised as having independence, not ones that sponge off their husbands or their fathers. Strong-minded women may well be seen as problematic, but ultimately people will respect that. It's only viewed as being problematic for those who are weak enough to see it as a problem. Most people will think, okay, they know their mind, they're strong about it, fair enough. I might not particularly like the stance that they're taking, but there we are. Of course, Harry's wife thinks that she's strong-minded. You're not. What you are is a narcissist, and that's what means you difficult. You haven't got a strong mind, not at all. Harry's wife today claimed that strong-minded women are branded difficult because it is a code word for bitch and admitted that while not everyone is going to like you, the goal can be for them to respect you. Oh, thank you for setting goals for us. How condescending. The Duchess of Sussex says that the B word is being used to gaslight women who know what they want in her latest Archetypes podcast for Spotify. Harry's wife also describes disliking the word pushy. Well, that's applicable to you again. That's why you dislike it, because it threatens your sense of control and admits moderating her behaviour, bullshit, to avoid being perceived that way. Describing what people mean when they say bitch, Harry's wife says, what these people are implying when they use that very changed word is that this woman, oh, she's difficult. What it really, which is really just a euphemism, or is probably not even a euphemism. It's really a code word for the B word. And speaking about the word difficult as a way to describe women, she added, my friend said to me, there's a certain point when you come to terms with the fact that not everyone is going to like you. The goal can't be for everyone to like you, but the goal can be for them to respect you. And actually, it's not your friend, it's you talking to the mirror again, isn't it, Harry's wife? Harry's wife says friends are reclaiming and embracing the B word, but she herself refuses to say it on the podcast, calling it the B word throughout or spelling it out for listeners. Oh, yes, I'm sure everybody's going to be shocked by the use of the word bitch. She says she would never use it unless it is to refer to a female dog. Fuck off. Don't believe that in the slightest. I can well imagine that there are members of the palace staff and people on those shoots who quite readily turn around and say, we've heard her say bitch and worse besides. Revision of history, of course, at the hands of the perpetual liar. This week, Harry's wife speaks to business leaders and entrepreneurs, including Melody Hobson, the chairwoman of Starbucks, who was the first black woman to be chairperson of an S&P 500 company. She is married to Star Wars creator George Lucas. The episode, To Be or Not To Be, also stars Victoria Jackson, a makeup mogul and friend of Harry's wife. Ms. Jackson is part of the Sussexes' close-knit group of friends in Montecito and described being raped and stabbed by the notorious pillowcase rapist in the 1970s. She went on to build a $1 billion business and then moved into medical research after her own child suffered a rare and often fatal eye condition. Harry's wife has discussed a number of similar subjects with her guests on archetypes, from being a diva with Mariah Carey to the myth surrounding singletons with Mindy Kaling. She also revealed her favourite TV programme growing up was the quiz series Jeopardy on the latest episode of her archetype series. More about that in due course. The Duchess of Sussex, <clears throat> 41, revealed the eighth episode of her pod crap today, which was titled To Be or Not To Be. Very good. I'm sure Hamlet was spinning in his grave. 
and featured Victoria Jackson, the makeup mogul, and Melody Hobson, the chairman of Starbucks. During the introduction to the show, the royal mother of two spoke of her love of television shows. And I'm going to return to that in due course in a separate video as a consequence of it clearly being a patent revision of history. We have already, in the short detail that's provided here, more evidence of the ridiculousness of Harry's wife. And I'm sure when I scrutinise the actual transcript, more will come out. But already, in the subject matter of this, it's demonstrative of the way that her narcissism blinds herself to her behaviours and causes her to issue these ridiculous pronouncements. Let's see what the early flavour is below the line in terms of people's reactions to this latest piece of nonsense that Harry's wife is churning out, to see what people think about the observations and her comments about the B word, so that people are able to understand more about where she is coming from. Always a good barometer to go below the line, and first comment is from Loddle Piggle. Okay, then, Harry's wife, stop being difficult. Granston, no, difficult is difficult. Lockdown suck. She's so fake. John 4 to 1. Well, Harry's wife is difficult, so that is true. Hefferlump, respect needs to be earned. Marilise, respect, respect works both ways, Harry's wife. Josie DM, you have to earn respect. You don't get it as a right. Chemical Angel, respect is earned. You've done nothing to warrant respect. D Rain 1 9, what have you done to gain respect, Harry's wife? Nothing. Lollipoppy, Harry's wife, you're right. Now you only still have to realise that you yourself are very, very difficult. This could be the first step to change yourself. That's not ever going to happen. Me, respect works both ways and isn't an entitlement. Boston MA, you have to earn respect. You have not. Rabbi Burns, one, two, three. Respect is earned by behaviours and actions, which is why Harry's wife is not respected. Sweet P, respect is earned. Science Squid, respect has to be earned. Love actually, if you treat someone with respect, they will do the same back. Loyalty is something that's earned over the years, something that most of the royal family have mastered, mainly keeping their staff for a lifetime. If you are difficult with people, they are not inclined to stick around. JAC 496. There's so much going on in the world at the moment that, that is so much more important. Bertie Rowlarts. It must be so tiring being in a constant state of overthinking and analysing everything. With her privilege, you think she would just enjoy what she has, her children and her husband. It's incredibly sad. She's throwing her life away just to create issues where none exist. Waggle. True. Respect is earned. Wimslow Man. Respect is earned, not given. Politeness should be given. Croc 777. Taking care of your old dad might earn respect. Actively encouraging your husband to be a good son and brother might earn respect. Not trashing the royal family to earn money might earn respect. Ceasing the endless narcissism might earn respect. Well, she can't do that. Mr. Muffin 7-1. Respect is earned, not given. Maz. Respect has to be earned. It is not an entitlement. It is also a two-way thing. I think you get the measure of the way that people's minds are going there, don't you? But this is just another example of her narcissism in action, spouting nonsense, hypocrisy, and, of course, giving us a further opportunity to dissect it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.